Good morning. So we just changed time zones by 45 <laughs> minutes yesterday. We drove about 400 kilometers from where we were last at towards the Holland track. And now we are in the Nullarbor on the air highway. So we've pulled off the road about 25 minutes off the road, bit of a dirt two track. And we are now at a awesome cave that a local told us about. So we got greeted by beautiful swallows that live in the cave this morning. And now I've got three falcons that are just sort of swooping the cave and hunting. So I'm going to go check the cave out. We've got two GME walkie talkies now and uh, I'll be able to talk to her. I've got my head torch and I'm going to head down there. Look at that. It's all the swallows coming out of their nests. All right, so Angie's gonna stay here and I'm gonna head down, see what we can find. This looks like a bit of a full on climb down though. It's the only issue. Channel 21? Yeah, channel 21. it's on down the hard part I think now we continue all right time to descend I'll see you soon I'll come back up and tell you if it's worth coming down okay Okay. that's Anne's way up there this cave is much more vast than I realized so you can't see my child there you guys probably can't see anything on here, but I'll show you just how dark it is. Like scary dark. Welcome back. I made it. <laughs> God, that's like climbing a mountain. That just goes down so far. I am the troglodyte and I return. <laughs> oh my god. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we're back in the camper and I'm just looking very briefly at the map just to get an idea of how many kilometers we've done the past few days. So the last episode basically after the Holland track we arrived in Kaguli and we are now all the way past Kaguna. So this is around 530 kilometers. So we did quite a lot of driving the past few days and then we make our way towards the border and it's time for us to leave Western Australia in a few days. that's called a shingle back or a bobtail. They're a pretty funny lizard. <laughs> super super defensive but really cute at the same time. <laughs> like a Pokemon. <laughs> and um, we just drove, we ended up driving around them. I was thinking of picking them up but I don't know what happens if they bite you. Let's not do that. It's probably not worth the risk out here in case you got septical, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, yeah we just drove around them instead. Chunks do break away sometimes. Right on the edge, man. How's this for a spot, eh? So we have officially crossed into South Australia. 
We are on the Bunda Cliffs, just past the border crossing, and we're about halfway on the Nullarbor. This is awesome, right on this continental shelf of Australia. So if you're a recent subscriber, you wouldn't know that we have actually been in Western Australia for almost two years. When we started our travels with the Jeep in 2000, 20? 2020. <laughs> we actually made it to Western Australia exactly two years ago at the start of the pandemic. We basically made a big dash over 48 hours to cross the country as all the states were shutting the borders. It's a bit of a strange system in Australia for that. Each state has their own kind of like little system. And here we are back in South Australia that we had to skip. So we are looking forward to exploring some new places. Yeah, just soaking it all in. It's really nice actually because the border with WA is just open to the rest of the country. <laughs> so we have passed thousands of people and caravans and holidayers heading into WA. And we are one of the only few, basically just us in the road trains, <laughs> yeah. heading the opposite direction. So actually I think we've timed it really well. I would say South Australia is going to be really quiet yeah. for us touring around the place which is always a bonus for us. We mm -hmm. don't really like the busy touristy crowdy spots. So I think our timing is impeccable. Yeah, and in weather wise as well, apparently it's the less windy time of the year. So that would be great for that. Now we just have to get used to the new time zone. We change another two hours, which is really strange too. It is strange. So we <laughs> lost two hours, unfortunately, but so, uh, never get mind. Get some sleep in <laughs> and yeah. the later sunset. <laughs> I would like to take a photo from up here on the tripod. I think that'll be really neat because it's such a cool view. It's like the first time I've been up via the gun hatch and um, it's actually really, really easy. I don't think we need any kind of a... Uh, you put the cork mat really yeah, nice and cozy. I don't think we need any kind of like a step system. It's actually, it's super easy for Angie <laughs> to climb up here. So we're going to do that more often. <laughs> we'll swoop on the lens. Get a bit wider. What is your dream lens that you would love to get? Ooh, probably the 70 to 200, I think, for the Sony, the G Master series lens. But I probably would go Tamron 70 to 200 f4, because I don't need an f2.8. It'll be quite heavy as well. So yeah, f4 Tamron 70 to 200. That will be the next lens I would get. Nice. And now. Taking a little photo of your Matsu socks. <laughs> <laughs> Just a different perspective. You know? <laughs> All right, a little behind the scene. Chris is over there with the tripod. We're gonna set a 10 seconds timer and we've got an app or we can schedule the timer. Usually, like we just run when we are kind of like running distance from the camera, but like there's no chance in 10 seconds they can get it from here to the roof. So yeah, that's gonna be quite handy. Just press a button on the phone and we've got a nice foot. Gold, but yeah. so cool. Sunset is not finished. The show is over. The show is over. No, Time to cozy up in the camper and come back on our roof for sunrise tomorrow morning. We 
we're in a cloud <laughs> literally by the cliffs it's probably the coldest morning since the beginning of our trip but it feels good to have like a warm coffee outside that's i missed actually that feeling of waking up and just being warmed up by the coffee oh so good i had a terrible night of sleep you probably can tell my face i'm feeling very tired i i don't know why i was keep thinking of this cliff collapsing all night long and then I got a bit claustrophobic in the mug. It was really windy and I just yeah, didn't have a good enough sleep but this was worth it for this magical place for sunrise. Now the sun is popping out of the cloud. We'll just chill here a little bit longer and then probably crack on eh? Carry on. I had a good night's sleep so I'm fresh, <laughs> fresh to dry. Yeah look at him. <laughs> I can chauffeur Ange around, you can snooze. Oh, <laughs> co-pilot Ange snooze. Chris is on spotting whale's mission. We've seen a few, haven't really seen the whale, but we've seen the puff of air a few times, but there's not, uh, not, not any this morning so far. They must be snoozing. Yeah, so they migrate from Antarctica, and then when it gets too cold over there, travel along the Great Australian Bight all the way to the southwest of Western Australia and all the way up towards Exmouth, which is where we saw them last actually on our trip. Actually the only time we saw wells on our trip. So we have made it to the Nulabo Roadhouse, which we have decided we're not going to fill up here. There's not a chance. So just to give a bit of context right now, all over the world, as you know, the diesel price and the fuel price in general is just skyrocketing. And it's probably the worst place to be at the moment here on the Nulabo because it's always expensive here, obviously, because it's so remote. So just to give you a bit of context here, at the moment, it's $2.90 per liter Australian dollars. But this is what we're looking at, but we don't need at all to fill up at this stage because we've got our auxiliary fuel tank, which is still full from our previous fill up. We're carrying all is, the fuel, which Look is at the original roadhouse. Exactly what we wanted to do. So we're just gonna have a little break, a little coffee, and we carry on. for the wicked. <laughs> See you, enjoy. Alright, after another 400 kilometers of driving today, we have finally found a little second camp in South Australia and not too bad of a spot. It's um, so far the road condition and everything hasn't been too bad, not too much corrugation 
Um, but I'm just like exhausted the past few days, like the constant driving and stuff. I told Chris I'm, I really don't feel like doing any editing. So it's kindly offered to edit the Holland Track video, which obviously I was supposed to do. He's doing so much driving already, but despite of that, he still has so much energy. He had a lot more coffee than I did today though. So I'm planning to try to reach those dunes over there. They're not very big, but I love sand dunes. I've got the drone with me. I'll see if it's worth playing the drone over them to watch a little bit the sunset. I'm not even sure. <laughs> I can actually reach through there. But I'll just carry on. Slow walking through this part. Yeah, no. I think I'm gonna backtrack, go via the beach, and I'll see you on the sand dune. All right, I made it to the dunes. It's so remote and quiet in here. I think South Australia for that is gonna be great. It feels like there's no one around. I love it. All right, I'll try to make it to the top before sunset. Incredible. Oh no, I wish so badly Chris would be with me. Oh, it's such a magical dune. It's like really textured and like really different. Oh, it's such a stunning spot. Like now that I saw the perspective as over the drone. So we have made it to the first town officially in South Australia. So we have officially completed the new labor. Yeah, so yeah. like a long time. So the last time we were supplied was in Kagoli. We had to get a really limited amount of fresh veg and fruit because at the quarantine station here when you enter the town, you have to dispose of them. So it was nice. Today we have some nice fruit and veg in the fridge. We had quite a bit of like frozen fruit and veg, which is what I do usually when we get into these remote places. It's quite handy to have in hand. And now we're unpacking basically our groceries. One thing we tend to do now that we've got the mug to keep a bit of space and as well limit the amount of rubbish is we try to remove as much packaging as we can. And we have access here to rubbish so we can just dump it. And yeah, we don't actually buy for too much in advance because now we'll have a few little supermarkets in this remote town before we can resupply properly in the main town down on the Air Peninsula in Port Lincoln. So this is the plan. So we are as well waiting for our laundry to get done. So there's a laundromat in town. This is how we do our laundry on the road. We just stop along the way every two to three weeks uh, around. So now we're waiting for the dryer. Another stop before we get going as well will be the post office. We've got five orders of stickers. So Joe and Greg from the UK, thank you so much as well for getting the stickers from that far away. 
so just got diesel and at the last stop is water we never came across a station like this where it's actually a paid station so it's one dollar for 150 liters which is pretty amazing we really don't mind paying a dollar for 150 liter that's pretty crazy i guess they do that so that they limit people that you know wash the caravan sometimes you see that in in filling points not ideal especially in remote towns like we are right now so hopefully it will be pretty straightforward Working? <laughs> yeah. All, right, all the chores are done. We are hitting the road again. Bring on the Air Peninsula Adventure.